Welcome to Tip Top Gossip. I'm Siobhan. I'm Tiana. I'm Abiel. And I'm Caitlin. With us today, we have a lovely studio audience and the wonderful Ben Shires. Hello. For those Hello. of you here in the studio and at home who don't know who Ben is, he is a children's TV presenter for the CBBC. He presents a show called Officially Amazing that tours around the world finding world record breakers. Ben has even met the tallest man in the world who stands at a massive eight foot one inches. Ben, Siobhan and I are both pretty tall. We're about 5'10", would you say? Yeah. Should we show you? We'll show him. We'll show him. <laughs> yeah, nice. embrace So we're 5'10", you're 6'2". I am, yeah, yeah. Do you want to stand up and show everybody? Yes. Well, look how tall this man is. It's a tall competition. <laughs> it is a tall competition. So you can try and imagine go. how tall the tallest man was. Yeah. Well, I don't need to imagine, because <laughs> I was there. <laughs> How was it meeting him? Uh, it was good, yeah. It's really weird. You go uh, into like a normal room and it's all of a sudden not normal because there's someone who is so beyond the scope of what you could ever imagine. Uh, we met in the Guinness World Records offices, yeah. a perfect place to meet the world's <laughs> tallest man. And uh, it's, it's one of these kind of buildings where they, they've got kind of ventilation stuff coming off the ceiling. And he's ducking. And I'm like, what? Oh, this, not, is, this wow, is, it, yeah, you know, yeah. it's an probably an eight and a half foot ceiling and he's kind of <laughs> like it's just so weird uh, like Alice in Wonderland yeah, well, yeah 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 exactly but he was he was a lovely guy I met him with the world's shortest man as well you did uh, oh, they were wow. yeah they really had loads in common because I think they face I mean obviously not their height yes. but like they face a lot of the same kind of uh, prejudices, the same oh, questions, yeah. yes. uh, and they're both kind of really humble. Oh, I d I, they're both from quite rural communities, um, oh. and I, they, I don't think they ever thought they were going to be famous for their height. So. That, no, it's quite yeah, a strange thing to be famous for, isn't it? Yeah. They were both saying that they um, they might make the tallest man if yeah, if him. I if I sat on top if you of stand on me, <laughs> shoulders, she'll be they'll be about the same height if they're yeah. on top Listen, of I mean, there's, there's so many Being problems small with that. is not bad thing. I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, ben, now, of course, you work for the CBBC, which is a very established broadcasting company. Yeah. Um, what would your advice be to future presenters we might have in the audience here or watching at home uh, about making strong contacts in the industry? Get out while you still can, you know, <laughs> cut loose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's brilliant. I love my job. I think it's brilliant. And, and if, if it's something that you enjoy, if you like, if you like meeting people, having chats, uh, you know, going on adventures, I think it's one of the best jobs in the world. I think, you know, genuinely, any job that feels like it's it's just an extension of your hobby is the best job in the I world. So I get yeah. to meet a lot of kids, uh, yeah. and I think they're some of the best contacts to meet anyway because <laughs> yeah. they're so enthusiastic. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you're talking about networking, I sort of shudder at that word. I hate the mm. phrase networking. I hate going mm. to networking events. Yeah. I think they feel really false, really impersonal, really artificial. I think the best way is to be yourself, yeah. yes. uh, you, know, uh, you know, yeah. reflect who you are, yeah. don't go up with an agenda. I think just speak to someone, try and initiate a conversation like you would with anyone. Uh, yeah. And then if you get on with them, they'll see who you are and hopefully want to Of course, you love being yeah. a presenter. Yeah. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Ben uh, used to be a lawyer, a very successful lawyer. He <laughs> has a law degree. Um, so what made you make such a huge transition from law to presenting? Well, I should pull you up there because I wasn't successful. I was a oh, lawyer, but there was oh. no success involved. Oh, no. Uh, no. I, in the terms of, I never, I never uh, actually started at my law firm. I had a, a job, a contract that I'd signed. Um, but I just got to that point. I think I'd sort of slept walked through my education. Uh, I did uh, my A-levels. I did law at A-level, enjoyed it. Oh. Did law at uni, enjoyed it less, but yeah. then started to worry that I didn't know what else I should go do and then did law at post-grad level and then got a job as a lawyer. Whoa. All of this just because I was doing what people sort of said that I should. Yeah. Uh, but at, all, at the same time, performed on stage, I've been in bands, you know, all that kind of stuff, loved that. And then it just struck me that I was doing something that I didn't love mm, and yeah. that I wanted to do something that I, I wanted to get up for every day and not have the fear, which yeah. a lot Chase of my friends talk dream. about. What is I, the story see, behind yeah. the first ever job that you landed with the CBBC then? Um, well, I, I suppose the story is mm. uh, it took a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, I, like I say, uh, I quit my job, uh, did lots of part-time jobs, uh, handing out leaflets on the street. Uh, I've done that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was dressed as a chicken. <laughs> cold. Was, uh, <laughs> not as cold. Quite humiliating. Uh, and then I worked in an arts venue for like two and a half years. All the while was putting together bits and pieces for my showreel. Yeah. Eventually, uh, after about 12, 14 months, I got some good stuff. Sent that to an agent. They signed me. 
And even then it was a slow process. The first year was just kind of meeting people, uh, you know, building up kind of my, my profile. So it really like, yeah. didn't fall just fall in your lap. Yeah, I think it's like all these, <laughs> no. and there's the classic, <laughs> every overnight success yeah. takes like 10 years. Yeah. So. I was thinking yeah. that, I just wanted See. to say he didn't just do it, he, he put the work he in and the work in, he yeah. worked you got out there. Yeah. But, oh. Well, yeah, I love, that's what I actually love about you as well because I see that your style, and I noticed that your style was very different in the courtrooms than how it looks now. So can you describe to me this unique style that you have? Um, well, I suppose it's, I mean, obviously it's a conscious thing, like yeah. everyone chooses yeah. what they wear. And yeah. that's <laughs> <the> <laughs> Unless your mum yeah. does. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I genuinely, it was never a kind of, right, this is what I'm going to wear because yeah. this will make me stand out for TV. Mm. Like, you know, I was, I, I've, I've always kind of worn weird oh, clothes. When I was like really? 15, yeah. I bleach blonded my hair to look like wow. Eminem. Yeah. Um, wow. I did the same for Beyonce. Yeah, well, Can the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, already, it's not me. Um, he's already stood up. Yeah, I was like, you know, living in a sort of East Yorkshire market town and, and fancied myself. Yeah, as a, is wow. your whole cupboard just tweed? Uh, well, not all tweed, and I think a tweed <laughs> yes, cupboard would fall down quite quickly, but yeah, um, yeah uh, a lot of the stuff that I own, yeah, oh, I, I just, so I like a classic look, and I think, yeah. you know, it's that old cliche, isn't yeah. it? You know, style never goes out of fashion, and yeah, I definitely. think, you know, I love wearing a tie. I feel yeah. comfortable <laughs> in a tie, and I think comfort's a state of mind. I don't yeah, feel as comfortable wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. I feel comfortable yeah. in, a, in a shirt with my top button right to the top. There you go, yeah. But you, even said, like, you even <laughs> said, like, your, your style was a cross between Charles Dickens and a holy vampire. Is that what you said one time? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw <laughs> that you said that. He's like, no, I yes, so Okay, all right. That's what I, I thought did that you had some stylists or some fashion icons that you that had inspired you for this um yeah i don't know i think i've always loved history i've always been fascinated by uh the sort of the social side of history and yeah. i suppose that that extends to clothes and mm -hmm. i think you know i think the victorians didn't uh, get everything right but i think the way that they dressed was <laughs> was Dress admirable yeah and it's yeah i just point, yes. like i say i mm -hmm. i like to dress in stuff that I, I feel comfortable in and I think mm -hmm. reflects yeah. me. And do you know oh, what's really weird as well? Like, honestly, if you dress smart as a guy, mm -hmm. people just treat you better. You go into yeah, a shop and definitely. people will like, you yeah. know, they'll do more for you than really if nice. you're wearing, yeah. you know, other stuff that didn't maybe look as smart. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So Ben, you're 30, aren't you? Um, well, don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did the, um, the 30 by 30 by 30 challenge. I did. Uh, would you mind telling us and everyone yeah. watching what that is? And why you did it? Well I, well, I wasn't very busy last January. And it was uh, in the run-up to my 30th birthday. So, yeah, shock horror, I'm 31 next month. <laughs> and um, basically, I realised that I had a bit of time and I wanted to do something. I, I think age is arbitrary and, and it doesn't really matter what age you are because, you know, I started late in telly and I, I work with people who are sort of 18 now. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily know which one's older or younger. So I wasn't preoccupied with age, but I just thought I may as well use it to my advantage. You're as old as you feel, <laughs> my 93-year-old grandma says. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> it, well, hopefully I don't feel 93. Um, <laughs> you don't look at your well, fine. You don't you look at it, don't worry. No. No. Yeah. Anyway, so in the yeah. 30 days uh, leading up to my 30th, I thought I'd do a new oh. thing every day just to push myself to, to create some content, to do mm. interesting things. Yeah. So, so that was the basis behind it. It was really a snap decision. I made the decision like the day before the 30 days was due to start. And well, so yeah. it was a bit of a panic. And then it was trying to keep up with it. It, it took loads of organization. I, I just thought, oh yeah, I'll just do one thing. I'll like, eat a new chocolate bar or something. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up like, you know, going to France for the day. And, what you know. was the hardest challenge you did? Yeah. The hardest, uh, it was probably the first because I feel like I've got a really a broad palette. I love most food and I thought I'll, I'll wow. eat something that scares me so I tried to cook and eat tripe. Yeah, just, yeah, just like yeah. By the way audience, so <coughs> tripe is the lining of a cow's stomach yeah. and Ben ate it. Watching you yeah. eat yeah, yeah, watching watching you it. Ben oh, also it's really, Honestly <laughs> the grimmest smelled. thing is that even the smell of it was yeah, just like it, it makes you gag and, and you know the thing is it's like it's still a, a delicacy in places like Italy and Portugal mm. it's eaten a lot in, in African cultures as well yeah. and yeah. where I'm from uh, people still eat like offal, tripe and, and yeah. all the insides of yeah. an animal and yeah. enjoy it but I, I just couldn't, <laughs> it, was, couldn't. it was the worst ben, thing. You, you also went on um, Mastermind and we have a quick fire round question. Can we quickly so dim really the lights? Really round it up. Okay. Yeah. Really round it up. Dim the light please. Can you answer this question for me? Mary has five, Mary's father has five children. Joe, Jacob, James and Joshua. What's the fifth child's name? Dum, dum, dum. Time's up. 
Um, I it was Mary. <laughs> Mary's father has five, five children. children. Oh, gosh. There yes. you go. See, I said so, it again. <laughs> because you had to shave your lovely moustache off after Movember, we brought you some fake moustaches. Oh, wow. Do I win, though, despite the fact that I, I didn't well, answer yeah, the riddle? You didn't win, <laughs> but it's a big win. thank you to say thank you so much for being that's a wonderful great. guest. <laughs> but Mary forgives you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank I'm afraid you. that's all we've got time for today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, massive thank you to our thank lovely you. audience. And thank an even you. bigger thank you, of course, to Ben Shire. Yeah, thank, thank, you. Well. thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Uh, tune in next week at the same time for your next lot of Tip Top Gossip. Bye for now. See you later. Bye. Bye.